Let's continue with the endocrine system and look at the adrenal glands. Now notice in this picture where the adrenal glands are located. Right on top of your kidneys on what's called the superior poles. So since you have two kidneys, you should have two adrenal glands. Looking inside the adrenal glands will have two different regions, a medulla and a cortex. The medulla is the deeper inner region. The cortex is the more superficial outer region. You'll hear those terms medulla and cortex on other structures in the body too. But looking at the adrenal medulla, this is all sympathetic nervous system. Remember, this is one of the three divisions of the autonomic nervous system. It doesn't matter where you find neurons in the sympathetic division. They always secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine. Remember, this division is what's also called the fight or flight division because it definitely causes changes in the body that you see when you're physically active. So this targets many things. Primarily think heart, lungs, and skeletal muscle. When you get physically active, you need your heart to pump faster and with more contraction, more contractile force. That way it pumps more blood. You need to breathe faster to get in more oxygen, release more carbon dioxide. And at the same time, you're going to send a lot more blood to those structures and skeletal muscles too. But you can't just think of epinephrine and norepinephrine as stimulating things because at the same time, it also inhibits others. Just think about what you don't need to be active when you're physically active. Obviously, at that time, you don't need a lot of blood going to your digestive system, kidneys, reproductive, and so on down the line. If ever you started running and your side was hurting, that was your small intestine. You suddenly started to run and a lot more blood went to skeletal muscles, heart, and lungs. There wasn't enough going to your small intestine. And when you don't get enough blood and oxygen to an organ, it'll hurt and it'll let you know. Ordinarily, around 20 to 25% of your blood's going to your kidneys. That's a good place to pull it away from there. The epinephrine and norepinephrine will also raise your blood sugar levels. Makes sense that it would since you're physically active at this time. And the effects are very short-lived, meaning they don't last for very long. But going to the adrenal cortex, right? This is all epithelial cells here. One of the chemical signals is cortisol. And this will target many tissues in the body. But you'll almost always hear about cortisol when it's working as an anti-inflammatory chemical, blocking those chemicals that cause inflammation. And again, if you want cortisol, you get the CRH from the hypothalamus we've seen before, the ACTH from the anterior pituitary to get the cortisol here. Another hormone from the cortex is aldosterone. This one targets the kidneys. And when it reaches the kidneys, it'll tell the kidneys to do several things. One, reabsorb sodium. If you hold sodium, you tend to hold water because water likes to follow sodium. Sodium's a very abundant solute. But at the same time, aldosterone also tells the kidneys secrete, in other words, get rid, eliminate the hydrogen and potassium. So it's going to tell the kidneys, hold the sodium and water, get rid of the hydrogen and potassium. If somebody had acidosis, which is where they have too much hydrogen in them, well, that would help to get rid of the excess hydrogen. They had hyperkalemia, where they have too much potassium in them, this would help to get rid of the excess potassium. And then also from the cortex, we see androgens responsible for the production of secondary sex characteristics. But think about what we would see if somebody was releasing too little of the aldosterone or too much. So if somebody's not releasing enough aldosterone, they won't be holding on to sodium, they would end up being low on it. That's hyponatremia. Just the opposite is seen with hyper. Since aldosterone tells the kidneys to hold sodium, you hold too much sodium, you end up with hypernatremia. And again, if you're not holding the sodium, you won't be holding the water, blood pressure is going to drop. If you're holding too much sodium, you'll hold too much water, and blood pressure would rise. But again, aldosterone also tells the kidneys to eliminate the potassium and hydrogen. So if you're not releasing aldosterone, you won't be eliminating these things. And of course, you would end up with too much of that in the body. And again, with hyper, you see exactly the opposite.